Hello, and welcome to another episode of Food Louisiana. I'm your host, Nils Breckoff. On today's show, we'll head to Acadiana, first to tell you about how one company became an Acadian institution, one cup at a time. And then we'll show you what the buzz is all about at Jolie's Bistro, a Lafayette restaurant that's doing farm to table right. Next, we're off to the capital city for some red stick style barbecue, and then we'll go in the kitchen for a little taste of Italy. It's all coming up next on Food Louisiana, don't miss it. Welcome back to Food Louisiana on Cox 4. Here in the Bayou State, a good cup of coffee is part of our joie de vivre, our love of life in Cajun country. It usually comes in the form of a familiar yellow bag, an Acadian original, Mellow Joy Coffee. Mellow Joy was founded in 1936 by the Begno family. It was the number one coffee back in 1940, 50, 60, and 70. In 1972, a, uh, a regional coffee company bought the brand and uh, instead of expanding the brand, they just chose to uh, remove the brand from the market. Okay, uh, Back in 1982, the brand was resurrected by a gentleman named Mr. Wayne Elmore. That's who owns Mellow Joy today. In the last few years, Mellow Joy has expanded not only in Lafayette, but in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Atlanta, Dallas and Fort Worth, and Tallahassee, Florida and all states in between. We also go to Rhode Island, North Carolina. Uh, it, it's pretty much all over the United States. Being that it was taken off the market for almost 20 years, the resurrection of Mellow Joy is taken off since 1982. And now not only does the older generation uh, who remembers Mellow Joy, but the, the new generations that are coming up are starting to learn about us and taste our coffee and we're seeing a lot of repeat sales on our coffee from the particular age group of 21 through 35. Uh, it is what you would call a gourmet coffee, okay? Even though it's, uh, it's on a shelf in the grocery stores next to the premium coffees, uh, we use the top 10% of beans that any company can buy in the United States, and uh, it's just good coffee. It has a, a rich, smooth, mellow flavor to it, uh, it doesn't lay heavy on the tongue. Uh, when you drink it, you enjoy it, and it doesn't overpower the meal. Over the years, different schools have called and asked about using the Mellow Joy product as a source of fundraising for the school. So we've put together a program that actually, if a school has 800 students that are willing to sell one case of the 12 ounce Mellow Joy bags, that's 12 units to the case, the school will net approximately $10,000 plus in gains. So it works out very lucrative for the school. Our coffee is very well accepted in the Louisiana area and along the Gulf Coast. The taste profile, everyone would love it. The grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, everyone that usually uh, buys from the youngsters for the fundraisers uh, would do very, very well with it. And again, uh, the money is very, very lucrative. It's important for Mellow Joy for, for two different things. We, we want to use our product to allow the schools to make the money and the amount of money that we, we offer to the schools to use our product uh, is, is $10,000 is a large sum of money for the schools so they, and they don't have to sell a whole lot of it to get that kind of money. And as far as a benefit for Mellow Joy, it does get our product into the households of the students' homes and for the parents to enjoy and the grandparents and all the other relatives that they usually sell their fundraising items to. To have more information about Mellow Joy, you can go to our website. It's www.mellowjoy.com. We offer all our products on there along with other items, whether it be gift baskets and other different assorted coffees that we have to offer. If you would like business information, you can call 337 264-7195 and more than happy to entertain any uh, either business distributorship, business idea, office coffee service, along with our retail items. I'm craving a cup right now. When we come back on Food Louisiana, we'll visit Jolie's, a farm to table treasure in Lafayette, where the food is as beautiful as its art. Coming up next on Food Louisiana.
Welcome back to Food Louisiana. Farm to table has become a popular buzzword in food these days, but one Lafayette restaurant is really doing it right with a passionate commitment to using local products to create a high quality gourmet experience, all in a setting that is uniquely Acadian. Let's take a visit to Jolie's. We've been involved in Blue Dog Cafe since 1999, and uh, in 2008, my landlord there acquired this gorgeous building and showed it to me, and I showed it to George Rodriguez, and it was really interesting because George said that when this was the first incarnation ever in this building, which was the Raven, uh, 40 years ago, he used to sit at the end of the bar every day and have a Raven burger because he could look out the front window and watch the front door of his first gallery, which was in the building across the street. So as soon as I showed it to him, he was sold, and, and we decided that we were going to create a sister restaurant, the Blue Dog Cafe, with a different concept. Blue Dog being Cajun, Cajun fusion. This time we wanted to go with something that was still very Louisiana, just as his art is, but we wanted it to be based on local seasonal ingredients. And one of the things that really attracted us is when we walked in here, it had the circular staircase, it had the pressed tin ceilings, it had a real New Orleans feel about it. And we could see that with a little bit of love, we could turn it into something really special. And we are, I think we succeeded because one of the things that we consistently get, in addition to comments on the food and the, and the service, is the amazing atmosphere. You know, that people really feel good when they're in here. And it, it just feels very welcoming. Well, we've been open since fall of 2008. And um, uh, we had to evolve a little bit from the beginning because in the very beginning, there wasn't a really big infrastructure of being able to get local product. Uh, there were a couple of farmers market, but markets, but not a lot of people that could provide enough local seasonal product for us to be consistently supplied. So it took a, a good year, year and a half for us to really make inroads into the farmers. And once we convinced five or six farmers to, to, that we were legit and we weren't gonna tell them what to grow, they could grow things and we'd find ways to use it, all of a sudden they started coming to us and we went from having to six to having 30 in a relatively short period of time. Uh, but the hardest part, I think initially, was creating the supply chain. And now we, we're doing uh, a lot of local produce, seasonal produce, everything we can get our hands on, no matter what season, uh, there's something growing. And our chef, Manny, will just find a way to use it. I was born in Sicily. Uh, my parents were both chefs. My father was a chef for 45 years before he passed away. So I grew up in the restaurant industry. Uh, started when I was seven. Uh, first uh, task, first job in the kitchen was stuffing chickens for a rotisserie line. And uh, a couple years later, I was um, promoted to dishwasher. It was, it was called a, a promotion, and uh, it started from there. Uh, the love of food was always in the family. Mother's side, lots of farmers, chocolatiers, wine makers, cheese makers. Uh, dad's side, candy makers, pastry chefs. So it was really good surroundings to kind of, for, for someone who was interested in food to get their feet wet. Well, the philosophy is really simple. is Louisiana farm to table. Uh, the approach towards that is very simplistic. It's a style that is more farmhouse than big city. We take in our ingredients from local farmers. We do very little to it. Uh, be as innovative as possible through simplicity and treat it just like that. We want the ingredients to shine. It's not about the chef, it's not about the cook, it's about the food that goes on the plate. People really love the fresh seasonal aspect of the restaurant because although it's a trend across the country in a lot of major metropolitan areas, it's not, you don't find it being done very much in a city the size of Lafayette. Um, and so that's what we, our niche is, is we have created a real farm to table restaurant that doesn't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. I have no doubt in my mind, I absolutely am blessed with by far the best uh, kitchen crew in Lafayette. I have a team of about 11 cooks, uh, all of them very, very talented. Uh, and the way we operate a kitchen is that we pull together all of our expertise. So it's not, as, as executive chef, I don't go in and say, okay, this is what we're doing, we want to do it this way. It's, all right, I have this great idea. Can someone please help me make it happen? So this guy comes in and he knows a little bit about Hispanic food, and this guy knows a little bit about this, and we just pull it together and make it happen. It's a very democratic, very um, pull everybody's ideas together kind of environment. We keep most of our uh, menus the same throughout the year with our all-star hits depending on season. So during the spring and summer, you see a lot of those dishes come back that people really enjoy. But where we really shine is the week-to-week -week changes. 
uh, and that is where our charcuterie, which were we were the first people, to, uh, the first restaurant to bring charcuterie to Lafayette, uh, doing a really old school. Uh, Southern European style, uh, very low preservatives. Uh, we have our Asian meat uh, cooler that we built ourselves. Uh, so we do a lot of that. And uh, do, throughout the week specials, you see not just myself, but the entire kitchen just pulling together and there's dishes from almost every cup. So we do our bar snack program, which is available during dinner service. And that's things that we kind of play around with, ideas and concepts that we treat our guests like guinea pigs with. Uh, and kind of test out what could and maybe could not work. His food is, well, he is Sicilian, but I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't call his food strictly Sicilian. What he tries to do is think about what is uh, most important to the area, area, what comes from the earth within, say, 20 miles of wherever he is working, and tries to incorporate all those, not just the food, but the feelings and emotions and the style into the food that he cooks. Lafayette as a whole, our food industry is really growing and blooming and blossoming. Uh, there's a lot of talent here and it's not, we're almost kind of still in the torch away from New Orleans a little bit and from Dallas and Houston. Uh, we have a whole lot of talent here that is very passionate and we are beginning this new movement where we really are shining a light on our ingredients. And, but we go a little bit further and showcase the people that actually grow it and the people that actually make that stuff and we're proud of it. Uh, and think that's one of the things you can probably take away from Lafayette the most is uh, that it's not, it's, it's a cuisine that is in its early stages coming up, but uh, eventually will grow into a great concept. You're going to find food that has been prepared with great technique from really local raw ingredients, nothing processed, everything possible from scratch. The flavor is going to be there, it's going to be nutrient dense, and so it's healthful. And the ways that, that we prepare the food here, uh, we've got a lot of unique dishes and they're constantly changing. We have fixed menus for lunch, our Saturday and Sunday brunch and dinner, that only a couple of items change with the seasons, but every week we have a full slate of dishes that are created based entirely on what the farmers can bring to us in that particular week. So there's always something amazing and it's going to be a food adventure. When we come back, we head to Louisiana's capital to find out what barbecue means in Baton Rouge. Next on Food Louisiana. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's smoky goodness. The mouth-watering sights and smells that can only be found in good barbecue. And in Baton Rouge, there's only one name that's synonymous with good Q, Padna's. It's a process. Everything that we do has a process, and that's a part of uh, barbecue is, uh, is preparing it. Uh, our fire started about 7 a.m., and by 10.30, uh, quarter to 11, we've got, uh, we've got ribs and chicken, uh, beef, uh, pork. Many restaurants in town uh, buy everything that's bottled or packaged already before it gets to the store. That's not what we do at all. We make fresh every day. We make our own baked beans. We're probably known more for our beans than anything else. You know, the People Magazine article last year, uh, Tim McGraw uh, picked us as his favorite uh, barbecue restaurant. And the one thing he said in the ad was he mentioned about our barbecue bean. And it's made fresh every day. Same thing with the coleslaw. And that's the way we've always done things. Uh, it's fresh made every day and it's got our original recipes that we've been using since the late 70s. If you've ever been into our, into our, uh, our places here in town, uh, you can see that everything is out front there ready for you to, to serve yourself. And that's uh, kind of what makes us uh, different or unique from everybody else. Uh, we serve the, uh, the meat up to you and then uh, allow you to go down the line, pick out the side orders that you, uh, that you want. Uh, but it's very, very fast. It's a very, very fast system. If you had an order to go, you could be in and out in five minutes. That's, that's no problem to pick up something and carry it out. And we've always been known for is uh, uh, our price point is not uh, and exceptionally high. The way we operate, I'm saying the way we prepare the food, all the things that we do uh, in advance, and we're able to get a product, a very high quality product. We buy the best of brands, they're national brands, 
uh, we, uh, we get out or put out a very high quality product at a very, very reasonable price. In the catering line, everybody's idea or concept is different. You know, what they want, how many people they're going to feed, and where they're going to feed them. Uh, and that's what we do very well. We're adaptable to being uh, anywhere. Uh, and uh, any number of people. On a game day, it's not a big issue to be able to serve up something for 50 people, 25 people, 10 people, five people. It doesn't really matter. We, we have it there, it's ready, it's available. It's a matter of putting it in the proper containers. We have customers that come in and buy party trays. They're, going, they're taking them to a tailgate. We have uh, people who come in and buy a family spread. That's five to seven people. Uh, we sell these party packs for uh, 10 people, 25 people, and 50 people. Those are all fixed. We deliver food down to the, uh, to the plants and the businesses up and down the river. Uh, they call us in. Uh, they tell us how many people they need to feed. And as long as I've got uh, you know, a, a couple hour, two hour span, I drop the food off to them. It's warm, it's still good. Uh, we give them everything they need. I'm talking about from the food down to the uh, plates, the napkins, the knives and forks, serving utensils even. Uh, we put all those in each package and uh, they've got everything they need to serve their crowd. No matter if it's 25 people or 250 people or 2,500 people. We also have, uh, during the uh, football season, our tailgating season, you might say, we have a, uh, a special that we put on. Uh, this year it's a uh, it's a slab of ribs, comes with two pints of side orders, baked beans, potato salad, uh, barbecue sauce, uh, Texas toast, and it feeds three to five people. When I say three to five, I'm talking about full, complete meals. We sell that during the season at uh, $21.85. So those are the kinds of things that we're good at. Uh, we're very versatile because we're an everyday restaurant and doesn't matter, you know, we're going to be there cooking every day anyway. So basically what we do is uh, we put some extra on for whatever the occasion is and we're able to get it done at a very affordable price. We have two locations in Baton Rouge. One is on 2648 South Sherwood Forest, which is just south of I-12. And then the other one is located at 7026 Florida Boulevard. You, you can call either store. Uh, you know, the Sherwood Forest store, the number is 295-7056. The Florida Boulevard store is 926-3341. If you'd like to contact us, you can also reach us by contacting us on, the, on our website. It's just www.podnasbatonrouge.com. That's www.podnasbatonrouge.com. Stay with us, because when we come back, we'll go from one boot to another. It's a little taste of Italy in the kitchen, next on Food Louisiana. Welcome back to Food Louisiana on Cox 4. In the kitchen today, we'll take a little trip to Italy with some perfect fall comfort food, cremini mushroom risotto. Take a look. Hi everybody, welcome to In the Kitchen on Food Louisiana. On today's episode, we're gonna take a little trip to Italy, making a risotto today with cremini mushrooms and mascarpone cheese. First thing we're gonna do is we gotta get our mushrooms ready. I have some dried cremini mushrooms here. First, we're gonna combine two cups of boiling water in the mushrooms. We'll let those sit for 30 minutes until they're soft. After that, we'll drain them through a colander over a pot and then we'll reserve that liquid to use later. In the meantime, we can chop the mushrooms. I have about 14 ounces of beef broth that we're gonna use. We're gonna combine that with the soaking liquid and then heat it up on the stove. Bring the soaking liquid and the broth to a simmer in a small saucepan, but don't let it boil. Just be sure you keep it warm. These are some uh, shallots that I have here. And we're gonna cut those down. You're gonna chop it up till you have about, oh, I don't know, let's call it three quarters of a cup. All right, next up, we're gonna mince a couple of cloves of garlic. Just give it a good smash. Paper usually comes right off. Big old honking cloves of garlic. I like them like that. And we're just gonna mince that. And we 
gonna take that and put it with our shallots. So now we're gonna take a medium saucepan and heat it up on medium high heat. I'm gonna throw a couple tablespoons of butter in there, or you can use cooking spray if you wanna make it a little healthier, but personally, I like the taste of butter. Okay, next it's time to add our rice and our shallots and our wine to the pan. Add the rice, the shallots, and the garlic, and saute it for about five minutes. We're gonna add our rice. This is one cup of Italian arborio rice, uh, or Italian style rice. It's a short grain rice with a whole lot of starch um, that's gonna release in our broth later and give us a really creamy and wonderful texture to our risotto. Now we're gonna add one cup of the broth mixture to the rice and cook that over medium heat until the liquid is nearly absorbed. Just make sure you keep stirring it constantly. Okay, so from this point forward, we're just gonna keep adding broth. Every time it dries up, we're gonna add another cup of broth until all the broth is gone. Now we're gonna add our mushrooms that we had from earlier. Get those in there. Give that a good stir. Distribute that all throughout. And then my other favorite part of this our wonderful Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And uh, make, I make sure all that gets in there. What you want to do is give that a stir until it's all incorporated and give that cheese a chance to melt. You want to season it up. I have some, uh, some sea salt here. And you know, just kind of eyeball it to taste. For something like this, I like a, a good little bit of salt. Come back and hit it with some cracked black pepper. And with starch dishes like this, I like to season generously because you kind of have all that rice to flavor up. I have some chopped fresh thyme here. Um, nothing like fresh herbs. In a risotto, all those essential oils get released and flavor the whole dish. Adds a nice woodsy green color. And the smell coming out of this pot right now is incredible. Okay, and there it is. This is our wild dried cremini mushroom risotto and I've topped it as a final little finishing touch with a scoop of uh, fresh mascarpone cheese. That's uh, really going to take this into the next level. So, buon appetito. Hope you enjoy it. Molto bene. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Food Louisiana. Tune in next time here on Cox 4 for more of Louisiana's rich food culture. Don't forget to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter and get the latest in-between episodes on foodlouisiana.com. Bon appétit.